One, two, test, test. So, uh, I have to remember that question I was going to ask you. Oh, the common denominator was, was networking and all these things. I know what it was. You started, it's, it seems like what you were saying is that you were really good at networking, but you didn't realize you were really good at networking. Um, how do you think you got good at it without knowing what you were doing? Well, I got really good at networking by default, really. I became a real estate agent and did not know a soul in the area. And in real estate, clearly you need to know people. So uh, I just didn't know what I was doing. And I went to a lot of events. I would go early in the morning. I would go at lunchtime. I would stay out late at night. I had a very young daughter at the time. She was uh, one or two when I got started. And I got babysitters and paid people to watch her. And I was going to these events and I wasn't getting anywhere. I, I, I grabbed all these business cards. I had stacks of business cards on my desk, in my purse, in my car, in my briefcase, and I didn't know what to do with them, and the stacks got bigger and bigger, and the bigger the stacks got, the more intimidating the stacks got, and I would just end up throwing them away. And So I was doing all this networking and wasn't getting any results from it. And so over time, I just figured out that uh, if I was gonna meet people, uh, getting the card, I wasn't at the event if I didn't follow up. If I wasn't calling the people on the business cards, I wasn't following up, I wasn't really at the event. And I was going to events like expos and things like that and grabbing all the business cards. So I would come home with 30 or 40 or 50 business cards and I realized that the more cards I had, the less of a relationship or rapport I had built with people and that calling them was just like calling someone out of the phone book because I had so many cards they didn't know me I didn't know them and I had nothing really to follow up about so over time of just really messing it up I figured out that I needed more quality as opposed to quantity of cards and contacts I figured out that when I followed up with them I needed to have something of value not just hey how's your day and I also needed to set up appointments to go meet with them and build some relationships. So I was developing skills as a networker and didn't even know it. I even created um, my own networking events. I was putting together antique car shows. I did an antique car show for seven years in a row and every year the car show got bigger and bigger and it was just myself that was promoting it and at the time I was promoting it as a real estate agent for my real estate business but I was also developing skills as to how to talk to people about the car show, how to promote the car show, how to follow up with them. So over several years, I was developing these skills as a networker, and I really just didn't realize what I was doing until years later when I got involved in network marketing, and I was doing what I had naturally been doing for years, and the people on my team and in my organization were asking me for help. Cammie, how? How are you talking to people? How do you create that rapport? How do you meet somebody that you've never met before and within a day or a week, they're your business partner? How is that happening? Can you help me? And so as I was helping those people, as I was helping those people, it started out with one and then uh, two or three at, at a coffee shop. And then on Sundays, I would have 10, 20, 30 of my business partners over with the flip chart and teaching them. and. So as I was learning, as I was teaching these folks how to do this, uh, I, I ended up putting together quite a system. I had uh, many uh, PDFs that I would give my business partners to give them pointers. I had conference calls. We did role play. They would go with me to events and watch what I was doing and just really realized over time that the years prior to network marketing, I had developed skills that I that I was taking for granted. I took them for granted that I was doing them. And then when I got into to network marketing and I was meeting dozens and then hundreds and hundreds and then thousands of people that all had the same, the same issues. They were afraid to talk to strangers or if they did go to networking events, they didn't know how to start conversations. And when they went to the networking events and started conversations, they didn't know how to follow up. And so the things that I was doing that I took for granted actually were skills that once imparted on others 
really help them to take their business to another level and up their game. So what made you, I mean, a lot of people go to networking, but you saw that it wasn't getting you anywhere. You thought you'd, you were collecting the cards, but some people keep doing that forever. They just never improve. They just kind of throw out the cards over, you know. What, was there a point where you said, well, this isn't working. I'm not getting anywhere. I have to do something differently because a lot of people don't do that different thing. That's why they came to you. What was that different thing you found that, or was it something inside your personality? Was it desperation because you have a child? Well, I've always been a guerrilla marketer too. Even when I was 10 years old buying gum on the way to school and selling it to kids for a profit, I've always looked at ways of improving on anything. I'll walk into a business even today and I think, why aren't they selling this? Or why don't they put this on the wall? So I'm always looking for ways to improve or, or ways to monetize or capitalize on, on different things. And so I'm naturally the kind of person who says, well, there's got to be a better way to do this. There has to be a way to increase my income, influence, and impact while I'm out. If I'm going to be up at 5 in the morning to hit an event at 7.30 at night or in the morning or go to an event at night, then I want to, I want to get my money's worth. I want to get my time's worth. So on top of being the kind of person who wants to always improve, I also was taking classes. I was taking classes in sales. I took classes in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, how to talk to people differently in different patterns. The sales classes that I was taking also taught me about personality styles and voice patterns and inflections and things like that. So all of those things combined together are how I was able to develop these, the new rules of networking. So you just never stopped learning? I never stopped learning and I still don't stop learning. I feel like I don't want to be coached or trained by someone who is not themselves being coached and continually trained and growing. And even with my clients, I share with my clients that when they are being trained by someone, make sure that if you're getting information from a financial advisor, make sure that they have what you want financially. If you're getting advice from a person on health and fitness, make sure they have what you're looking for. And same here, when we are getting coaching from, for business, for networking, for business strategy, for marketing, for better presence in the marketplace, make sure that the person that you are being trained by has what you want. And that's always been a quality I've looked for in my mentors, is that they have what I'm looking to acquire and years and years ago, what I was looking to acquire was better business skills, better sales skills, better ability to communicate with another human being. So I took a lot of classes on how to create rapport, how to be a better salesperson, and not to manipulate, but to be able to understand the other person's point of view so that I could be a contribution, so that I could collaborate with my clients. And, and so the, it's all of the personal development and personal growth that I, that I continue to go through. So how do you balance the learning and the teaching? And is it a percentage? How do you know you're getting that balance right between, okay, I've got to spend this much time learning and this much time teaching and coaching? Or is that something you're just not conscious of? You just, you're constantly feeding and well, constantly nurturing as well. Well, I feel like a lot of the times I will now, I, I, I always learn anything from the experiences I have. So in other words, I also train my clients or teach my clients to up their game in networking by going to events specifically to associate with a higher caliber of person. In other words, I'll go to, um, to self-development classes. I'll go for a day or a weekend or a week to another event. So while I'm growing as a person, I'm also continuing to develop my networking skills. And while I'm developing those networking skills, I feel like I'm out gathering new pieces of information like the squirrel bringing the cachet back home. And then I share that with my clients. Hey, here's something new that I learned. Here's a new way to do what we've been talking about. So I think that the personal development for me is just a way of life. I don't really need to dedicate a certain amount of time to it because it's a daily process for me. Whether I'm 
seeing a really phenomenal quote on Facebook that I can share with my clients or whether I'm going to a specific event, both to get the, both to get the information, both to, to get the information that I'm going for, the material, but also for the experience and the people that I meet. So the more enriched you become, the more you can enrich others. Absolutely. The more enriched I become, the more I can enrich others' lives. You said something much earlier. You said um, it was really interesting, and I don't know if you meant to say it or if you've used this before, but you said, if I don't follow up, I haven't been to the event. If you don't follow up, you haven't been to the event. Is that what you said? Yes. If, so you, if you don't follow up with the people that you've met, you, you leave an event and you've got... I always tell my clients, and for myself it's a rule of thumb, I'm looking for three to five good contacts if I'm going to an evening event. In other words, I don't want to overwhelm myself with getting a card from everyone. And I also don't ask for a card unless I do plan to follow up. I don't randomly just ask for cards and then look at them when I get home and throw them away or don't follow up. If I get a card, it is so that I can follow up. And if I, when, when I get those three to five business cards, if I get those cards and never follow up, I am clear that they won't follow up with me. It's just human nature. I've, I've given and received thousands, maybe tens of thousands of cards. Seriously, lots of cards. Been to at least a thousand events between Chambers of Commerce, BNI, meetups, you name it, I've been to that event. And when I get those business cards, if I don't follow up, then nothing ever happens. A relationship isn't developed, business isn't done. If I don't follow up with those people, business isn't done, relationships aren't developed, and ultimately, what was the point? What was the point of going to the event if I don't follow up? So, in, in essence, if I don't follow up, I wasn't even there. That's great. Um, so, you, you realized you had learned these things along the way, then people start coming to you. When did you decide and how did you decide, what motivated you to decide, this is what I want to do. I want to teach people all the network. I want to teach people building relationships. I want to teach all the many different forms of doing that, whether it's coming into a new town, a business barrier, or working better with their existing clients. Well, not only have I noticed through years of going to events and meeting people and building business personally through networking, not only have I noticed that it's almost an epidemic. It's an epidemic of people being out in the networking, morning, noon, and night, different events they're going to. All they can say is, what do you do? What do you do for work? And they're just not able to create really memorable, inventive conversations. So that's a pet peeve of mine is, is you know, what do you do? Well, let's talk about something else. What's the most interesting book you've read? You know, what's another networking event that you think I would benefit from and why? So. So it's a, it's a pet peeve to, to run into people and, and they just can't create conversation. And I know from experience, lots of experience, that people just won't follow up. And if they do follow up, they put you on the spam list, you know, they, they put you on some kind of a up market update or something that you didn't even ask for. And it's very annoying, even for people that I thought I wanted to do business, if the best they can do is put me on a bulk list with 100 other people without asking my permission, it's just very unprofessional. So through a course of events of, of noticing these things and just and, and continuing, when I'm out at an event and somebody hands me their card and I look at their card and I give them a, a, point, a pointer about their card and they say, wow, I never thought about that. Or when someone when introduces themselves to me in a way that maybe they're using an acronym that I don't understand and I turn it around and I say, well, what exactly do you do? And when they tell me, I say, well, have you considered representing yourself this way? Or instead of doing the boring 30-second elevator pitch, have you considered using a story and giving a testimonial so that people understand the results of working with you as opposed to the technical aspect of what you do? So because I'm always giving these points of advice anyway, it dawned on me, well, I'm already doing it. I have clients that I'm working with that have asked me to work with them specifically in a one-on-one -on -one private situation. So why not bring it to the world? And, and as I was sharing with people the, the name of my book and, 
and my ideas about bringing it to the world. I've just gotten rave reviews about, oh my God, Cami, let me know when that book is out. Let me know when your course is out. Not only do I want it, but my team wants it, or my office could use it, or my sales force could use it. Can you come in and teach our gym how to have the salespeople be able to relate to the clientele better? So in other words, the more that I talk about what I do, the more people are inviting me to, to share it with others. They're asking me to come speak at their events. They're, they're wanting to pay me to fly states away to go speak at their events. So that's how I was really called forth. I was called forth to do this. Um, it's, it's my purpose and it's my passion. And really, it sounds like, like you said, you, people are asking you to teach their team how to relate to others. It sounds like what you're doing is the epi going back to the epidemic, I want to get a little bit more about uh, you describing this epidemic, because it sounds like what you're saying is there's an epidemic of people not really knowing how to start and build and continue synergistic relationships. I mean, is that, am I getting it wrong on what that epidemic is, or? Well, there, there, is, there is a bit of an epidemic with that. I also see that, that social media is, has really taken taking people's ability for human interaction away. People that hide behind the, the keyboard or, or their laptop. And so I'm also working with some colleges to do classes for students on how to differentiate themselves even at a job interview. You know, bridging the humanity gap is what we're doing. We're bridging the humanity gap here. So I talk about it from a networking perspective because from my perspective, entrepreneurs, business owners and commission-based salespeople really need this training because they are out in a networking atmosphere and they're wanting to build their business. However, I find that it, to bridge the humanity gap in every aspect for people who are looking to get a job or even in relationships, when we're able to build rapport even at a Christmas party or a birthday party or when we're out at the baseball diamond with our kids, friends, parents, just to be able to communicate with other people expands our life in so many ways. It's not just about business. A lot of people are more interested in what I do from a business perspective because they're wanting to increase their income, influence, and impact in a business way. However, what they find is it also expands their whole life. They have more people in their life. When there's more money flowing, there's more activities. Their experiences are different. So one of the things that I teach people is moving from the old paradigm of fear and scarcity into the new paradigm of abundance and prosperity. Because when people are even aware, most people aren't aware that they're in fear and scarcity. So when I go to a networking event and I see people that are on the hunt, they almost look like a shark swimming around the room with a fin on their head. They're in, they're in hunter mode. They're just looking for the next contract to be signed or the next person that they can pounce on and sell something to. They're in hunter and fear and scarcity mode. They're in the, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? What can I get from the next person I talk to? So when I help my clients to differentiate, are you in that fear and scarcity mode? Because if you are, that's okay. I've been there. I have been in fear and scarcity. I know what that's like. That's why it's easy for me to pinpoint that they are and help them move into abundance and prosperity. Because when we move into abundance and prosperity, now instead of what's in it for me, they can focus on how can I help you? How can I be in service to that person? And so when we start to give of ourselves, what, we, what I find and what my clients find is the more we give, the more we get back. As a matter of fact, we don't get nearly as much by being in the hunter mode. When we get into farming, and even better yet, fishing, and the difference is this. People use this analogy all the time, but being in hunting mode you know, imagine being a rabbit running through the woods and you're running from a dog and your heart's pitter-pattering and you're in fear and you're trying to get away from that dog. It's, it's kind of a silly analogy, but it's so true. When you're at an event and you feel like you're being sold something or being manipulated, nobody likes that. So another way of going to the event is to go as a farmer so that you're not leaving with leads, you're leaving your seeds. You're planting the seeds of relationship and how you benefit that person, how you can build a relationship.